Good afternoon. My name is Sean Robertson and I'm Sales Director at Sunseeker International. Here we are today on board what I think is probably the first true yacht in the Sunseeker range, the Yacht 86. And hopefully you can see from the outside images now on screen that she's got a real substance, a real character that really does push forward that yacht feature, the, the extended lines, how the windows flow into the hull. So you can really see that really you're getting the, the shape, the look of a hundred foot plus in this 86 yacht. Now she's powered by a pair of V12 MTUs, 1925 horsepower each. Gives her about 27, 28 knots at the top end. But more importantly, the hull shape in this yacht has been really designed with a very uh, fine entry point on the hull that gives that typical Sunseeker ride, very smooth, very quiet, cutting into waves. But as you come back on the hull, it has a warped V and flattens out on the dead rise towards the transom. And why that's important at this size range is that the toys, the fuel, the water, the people, the equipment that most clients will want to carry add a huge amount of weight invariably at the stern of the yacht. So we really worked hard on the shape of that dead rise and the shape of that hull to ensure that throughout the speed range, whether you're running slowly, 10 or 11 knots at displacement speed, or all the way through to the high end cruising at 24, 25 knots, that the hull really carries the weight well. Now, to back that up, what we also learned from clients is, normally at this size, they don't want to be hassled with filling with fuel. You know, if they're there for a week or two weeks doing their normal daily short cruising, they want the ability to do that without having to refuel every second or third day. So to take that into account, we put an 11,000 litre capacity into the 86, which are, you know, gives you a cruising range anywhere from 350 to 400 miles at the slow speed, at the higher speed, all the way through to a thousand miles plus at a slower displacement um, cruise. So great ability, great ability to carry extra weight and really that real solid yacht look. I mean, this is a, gives you a real sense of security once you're on board and you know looking at the shape from the outside. And if we come into this aft cockpit, this is just typical what I'm meaning. The head height here, is incredible. Easily 210, 220 in head height. The size of this aft cockpit, I mean this is a table and seating that you could sit six or eight people around easily adding uh, director's chairs in front and you've still got a you know a ballroom floor of an aft cockpit here. So great space, beautiful built-in staircase here to the flybridge with great handholds and big storage locker underneath. You've got a secondary access in the floor here to the engine room. Obviously your primary access we'll see later through the engine room. So this is really only a, an emergency secondary access. On the starboard side, we've got a refrigerator serving the aft cockpit, extra storage locker here, and that all important aft cockpit sink, which is distinctive on a lot of the Sunseeker range. Multitude of uses, but for me the best is if you're med mooring, you've pulled up the bow lines, you're gonna get dirty hands. Very easy place to quickly wash off. Both port and starboard, you'll see the stern gear, oversized bollards, great foot controlled aft windlass for tightening up the stern lines. And then a, a rope tail end locker here. So again, once you've tied up to neaten the aft cockpit, but the tail end of the lines into the lockers, shut it down, very, very neat. And you'll see down here, controls for passerelle, uh, aft bathing platform, etc. on that aft control panel. So great sized aft cockpit, really does work well. Lovely featured lighting and inset uh, upholstered panels. And you'll see just a, an option on this yacht, you've actually got an aft facing corporate camera there, which is great for security when you're in a marina, but also if you are docking, uh, that, that camera will show up on the nav screen. So you've got a good view uh, after the yacht when you're coming in. So if we come to the door, we've got a central opening door here 
So sliding back over to the starboard side. The typical now Sunseeker flush floor from the cockpit through to the saloon with this deep wells. If you are washing down, have any water in the aft cockpit, it will drop into this well rather than you know, any danger of it going into the uh, inner saloon space. And before we walk in, just looking back from here, it's just important to note all the, the little details and features like the heavy gauge stainless steel legs on that table, uh, the storage lockers under all the seating and the inbuilt uh, lighting. So all of these little details that you see throughout the range, but really make a difference to the detailing of the overall design of the yacht. So coming into the main saloon, as I said, this feels, I, I, it's best words to describe, just a real stature, a real strength. Everything seems to be oversized. So these central columns here that house the aircon are just really oversized and a strong feature in the saloon, which I think work really well then when you look at the huge glazing port and starboard, which let that amount of light in. You know, for a saloon space, inset carpet beautifully laid into the wood flooring, these two massive sofas, which, I mean, you'll be shouting to the other side here. The amount of space is incredible. And then the two chairs, which can be moved around to suit. Again, just works really well. And what, what I like here is there's no uh, rise and fall TV you've actually got it incorporated into the forward bulkhead as a feature here. Works really well. I think then from si sitting position here, from the loose chairs, even from the dining table, that TV positioning works exceptionally well to get the maximum amount of people viewing when you want to in an evening. Height in here, exceptionally good and beautiful inset features. You know, this is a real yacht ceiling and it might sound silly but I think these detailing makes a huge difference. So stepped up into the ceiling gives extra headroom, inset lighting, then a beautiful uh, quartered or uh, hexagonal actually pattern of uh, lacquered panels on the ceiling. It's just a beautiful design feature and really you know makes a lot of that ceiling space. All the lighting inset with the AV speakers also inset into those ceiling panels. Works very well. And then as you move forward, you've got these two columns we talked about earlier that give you like a, you know, you're walking into a different space now being the dining area. So a table that's set for eight uh, could easily be 10 um, and that table could eas easily be extended more. I mean, you've got ample space, both port and starboard and four and a half for a larger table if you wanted it. And what you'll then notice on the port side is a stunning uh, servery unit, which houses refrigeration on the aft end through to, I think that's a 40 bottle um, wine cooler on the forward end, and then beautifully hidden in the, mo in the middle, two cabinets housing uh, crockery, glassware, bottles, drinks, etc. And then all topped off with a lovely uh, stone top, marble top, which again, for you know, laying out breakfast, drinks, maybe evening meals, serving from here, works exceptionally well. And all behind a super-sized window here still as well. Above the table, great lighting, uh, which obviously can be dimmed, it can be switched off just with the hidden lighting, depending on how you're using the table. Uh, and that beautiful feature again, mixing the inset ceiling and lacquer, which really gives you extra height and interest to the, uh, to the ceiling as you walk through. As we mentioned, TV on the forward bulkhead. And you'll notice there's a lot of mirrors in real, you know, carefully chosen spaces all the way through. So on the ends of the windows and the port and starboard side, here on the forward end. So it, you're never quite sure where the end of the saloon and dining area is. Very cleverly reflects light and the space around this saloon to make it feel even larger than the, uh, you know, how large it is anyway. Now, what I like here is you walk through the saloon, 
you're into dining and then you're you're completely open both sides coming through into the galley which is a great size i mean this is a beautiful size galley dishwasher oven hob microwave storage all the way around on the inner and outer um, countertops drawers here storage under sink oversized sink and drainage either size and i don't know if you can get the, the the relation of the countertop space here but huge amount of space for um you know for s setting out dinner drinks etc during uh you know during usage and it just carries on round you probably won't see it on the camera but we've got another bank of drawers here extra storage cabinet storage under the oven and then what i like is if this is a crew run boat or even an owner run boat when you're bringing uh, goods provisions onto the yacht uh, or if you are cooking during the day and you want some airflow you've got an all-important door straight out to the side deck to give either airflow or just easier access for bringing equipment on now you see it's set up as we said earlier it's 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 a complete 270 degrees here leading in one side through the galley through to the helm and observation area and then back down into the dining space and it's accentuated with this curved bar which has two bar stools sat on the outside it's a very sociable space but at the touch of a button certainly we can start to close that space off so you have a drop um, solid blind which will shut the, the bar space off and as I explain later, as we come back round, you've got two pocket doors, which actually convert this whole area from being an open plan, saloon, dining, galley, helm, very user friendly, particularly if you're being used by a family, to actually then completely shutting off the two pocket doors, where you've almost got what would be class more of a crew run yacht. So where you've got the crew separated at the forward end here and guests aft. So very flexible, which has made it extremely popular uh, for not only private use, but for charter use. So the 86s in their history, I mean, have been extremely successful as charter yachts. So something to keep in mind, potentially, uh, if you're interested in the 86. So here we come to the forward section you know, you're, you're really under the helm screens here. And again, the height, the, the volume of space here is quite incredible. So a step up to a great observation seating area. Um, what a great place to run. If you're running along, want to be out of the sun, but still with a great view, great seating. I'd love to be sat here having my coffee in the morning, I think. Or if you're running the boat with a crew, shut off those two doors. And it's almost the, the own, you know, captain come crew mess space completely separated from the from the guests. Give you an idea of the height in here. You'll see both on the observation seating and even at the helm that you actually have a step up um, to get you at the right height for the helm space. And it's uh, just gives you an idea of the scale of, you know, of this area. You've got two. On the helm itself, you've got two great sized 19-inch uh, um, screens for uh, the navigation systems, radar, chart plotter, etc. And then a third screen, which actually then runs all the boat systems. This is the Sunseeker um, control screen for all the systems on board, from AC and DC power, tankage, bilge, lighting, etc., which is all on a touchscreen display here. Coming along, obviously she's fully stabilised. We have the side power uh, vector fin stabilisers, which will obviously give you not only stability underway when you're running, and they work from about 10 knots and on. So even at slow speed crews, get great stability. But more importantly, when you're sat at anchor, it takes away 85, 90% of the roll, which makes spe make spending time on board much, much more comfortable. Coming across, we've got twin MTU screens here, which obviously give the 
uh, engine data, um, temperatures, pressures, etc., fuel usage, all on two separate screens for each engine. You've got three more th SIMRAD displays. So these can um, give you depth, speed, uh, course over ground, autopilot, all controlled in these uh, three smaller screens here. And then I will just take this off. So all of the SIMRAD uh, nav screens are touch, you know, touch control. What I would say is underway sometimes, particularly on a, on a you know, rougher day, being accurate and touching the screen can be a bit more difficult. So we do put in a, a control here, which gives you full uh, control of the screens from touch panel down here. So great benefit when you're running. The autopilot has the QS80 control, which means you actually do have a jog control stick here as well, which will allow you to steer the boat under autopilot control. Quite useful if you're coming in a larger harbour, larger channel, you want very accurate but small course changes can be very easily done with this controller rather than trying to come back off pilot, making a small control and going back on. So very, very accurate way of steering in confined channels. Um, coming over here, we've got uh, lovely stainless steel and ceramic touch controls for wipers, uh, intermittent wash wipe, horn, trim tabs. And then obviously right over here on the starboard side, main engine controls, they fall beautifully to hand from either a standing or seated position, works exceptionally well. And then you've got the proportional bow and stern thruster. So bow thrust, stern thruster, and you've got a hold or proportional control. So if you're coming alongside a dock and you've got a wind blowing you off, you can very quickly hold both bow and stern at maybe 10% of thrust just to hold you against the dock whilst your crew or family get lines sorted. So it's a very, very nice, neat little feature, which uh, arguably can hold you on the dock or even hold you off whilst you're prepping to go. So works exceptionally well. You'll notice you've got storage underneath the console here, access to the full breaker panels underneath, and just everything seems to fall you know, it's a large console space, but everything falls right to hand. Two Bezanzoni uh, helm seats, fully electric in height and forward and back position. Uh, so very comfortable for extended running. They, they, they work exceptionally well. Um, coming aft, so if you are at the lower helm uh, or just want access out to the side deck from this area, again, You've got a door here giving you that direct access out. So works really well. Even just letting uh, ventilation through in this area, particularly if maybe it's, it's, it's been shut off from the guest space. So, you know, you've got port and starboard access or airflow through with both of those doors um, uh, open. Coming aft, we have a beautifully sized day head on the starboard side. So obviously during the day, access for guests uh, rather than having to go to the lower deck level. So it's very nice to have it on here. And again, for privacy, maybe you just shut this door as well so nobody can actually see anybody actually using the bathroom. So I mean, I think it, again, neat little features that make life on board that much more comfortable. And I think if we come aft here, we can just give a demonstration of what I was meaning about these, these doors. So both on part, port and starboard side. These pocket doors slide across, so give complete shut off on those port and starboard walkways and really do change the whole feel of the yacht um, and how potentially it's used between crew and guests. Or it might be you've just used the galley and want to shut off the mess from the rest of the family at the end of an evening. So very, very flexible in how it can be used. Now, one of the big features in this saloon dining area is this ability to have this seamless uh, feeling of being with the water. So if we open this patio door up on the starboard side, first of all, obviously you've got then the light and the airflow coming through, but then we have the drop down balcony. So if I just release the catch here, 
and we're actually just quickly drop this down so you can just see that once that's dropped you've got a set of handrails that go in and that is a beautiful place to be sat maybe watching the sunset with your drinks in an evening uh, just being able to stand on that and getting the perfect view the view you then get from the table from inside to outside or as I've seen many times a great uh, launch platform for the uh, children and guests to launch themselves into the water so works very very well on giving that completely seamless feel of inside to outside space and being with the water just a push button both on hydraulic rams as it comes back up um, beautiful system again so smooth it uh, works exceptionally well and then simply locks back into place so we've had a good look at the balcony and that outside space there let's go downstairs now and look at the accommodation so you'll see you've got a nice central very wide stairway down great leather wrap stainless steel handrail and plenty of headroom coming down and what is really interesting with this space is this interior sort of lobby area so mirrors both sides so facing out to port and starboard the staircase is floating so it's completely floating stairs with these feature stainless steel rods uh, up to the end of the staircase so it, it's a it's a beautiful area in its own and very practical because underneath i've got storage space for all the guests um suitcases tucked out the way nicely i've got this beautiful storage unit here for towels laundry uh, and everything that can go on the uh, starboard side but what hits me as well is then you come into this lobby that with the layout of the cabin so having the master slightly further forward from amidships and the two um, cabins sort of three and four actually these are third and fourth cabins aft you've done away with the walkway in between the cabins so what it means is these two cabins are just immense they're equal so we'll go into one to have a look and let's let's go in the uh the port side here the port side cabin but look at the space <laughs> i mean this is the fourth cabin on the boat in between these oversized single berths there's probably getting on for nearly a meter great storage under each bed without having to lift the mattress up huge picture window with the opening port and obviously this cabin as a key feature same in the other side the other, the third cabin these berths obviously slide together to make a double if that's what you need so very very flexible but just a huge space feature ceiling beautiful contrast between the wood and the headboard and the padded areas around the sides of the bed um, i mean it just feels really rich really sumptuous and great space i mean you're definitely not the poor relation staying in in what is the fourth cabin so on the forward bulkhead we've got the uh, tv and entertainment good size mirrored wardrobe on the port side and that also houses the two filling cushions if you do slide it into a double and then going forward we come into yeah it's, it's a real great sized ensuite again and you know i think we talked earlier about this being a real you know first in the yacht series and it's got that real feeling of a hundred foot plus yacht with the size the feature the structure the the depth of um sort of structure into the boat it it really does work well uh great size shower with separate hand shower and overhead rain head um just works really really well lovely stone on the floor and the countertops storage under the sink and mirrored storage over the sink so and that all important opening port light on the uh the port side here works really really well we talk about this on every boat but you've got great access down to the service point in the bilge again with a beautifully cut and inset carpet with a pool hatch here so again you're not pulling carpets and underlay up to get underneath the floors You'll notice the detail on the doors as we come out beautiful stitched leather inset panels in the door and the leather wrapped 
um, door handles themselves. Little features that you tend to forget as you walk around, but they really make a, a difference to the interior. So as we said, on the starboard side, we've got a mirror image of that cabin. And then coming forward from the stairwell, we come into the master. And again, before we go in, we talked about the leather stitched handrail, but look at these beautiful leather stitched panels on the forward edge of this staircase and coming round. I mean, really beautiful detail. So master cabin, slightly forward of a midships, but full, still that full beam of the boat, massive windows on both port and starboard sides. Again, with clever use of mirror. These mirrors all the way through the 86 reflect the light both ways. I can't tell if that window is running another two meters that way or not. It's very, very cleverly done. Underneath, you've actually got storage lockers built in. Nice little detail, very practical. This beautiful breakfast come drinker, if you're getting ready in an evening with your glass of wine, works very well. And then to what is a, a king size bed, beautiful contrast of lacquer, um, headlining material, soft headboard material, and the mirrors again really break up this space and make it incredibly light. You have storage with four drawers under the bed, which again means you haven't got to lift the mattress, you've got drawer storage. Storage under both of these um, seating units on the, uh, the port side. And if we come across the other side of the cabin, look at the space. <laughs> uh, there's, there's probably a metre and a half of room around this bed. I mean, huge on what is not a small bed. On the aft bulkhead, we've got a 55 inch TV, built in AV system all the way through the ceiling. It's a beautiful desk come vanity space here with separate stool, lift up to, um, top with the mirror on there and nicely with a blue baize inset to keep everything safe and secure inside. Drawers on the aft and forward edges, just a huge amount of space. I mean, you, you're not squeezed in at all. You know, very, very well done. Access to the bilge again, nice and separated. And then forward, we've got a huge walk-in closet. I mean, I'm reaching here, you can see that this is probably about two and a half meters wide. Hanging storage, half height and full height on the inner edge. Drawer units underneath, there's what, six, nine, 12 drawers and a storage cupboard here and a storage cupboard above. And then even more shelf storage right the way around the top. I mean, for extended cruising, brilliantly, works really, really well. And again, all shut away neatly with a door once you're finished. Works really well, just a great size very comfortable, plenty of storage, um, just a very comfortable place to be. And then we come into, again, what's a real oversized ensuite, even at this size. Opening port light, glazed storage above the sink here. So two units, works really well, nice and practical with the mirrors, the twin sinks, storage underneath, the head on the forward bulkhead here, and then, again, I'm not sure if you can quite pick it up on the shower here, maybe if I shut the door slightly, you've got a massive shower space. Um, it's, it's another cabin. Um, you know, four or five people could fit in that shower with overhead, rain dance head, and a sh separate shower control, and a neat little storage area for, um, you know, for putting toiletries, shampoos, etc., on the forward bulkhead. Great space, very, very comfortable. You know, a great place to spend some extended cruising. So obviously that's the three cabins, but obviously the, she's a four cabin boat. So let's go back up to the uh, main helm area and we can see what is a, a separate access to the forward VIP. So access to the VIP is actually forward in this observation area. And you've got a huge wide staircase again very, very uh, gentle staircase, easy to walk down. Beautiful leather wrapped handrail again and feature bulkhead uh, panelling here. The mirror at the end again reflects the space. It's quite, you know, it, it doesn't feel enclosed at all. Great headroom. Through the beautifully stitched 
panel door again, we come into the VIP. Now, in my view, although it is the VIP cabin, she is smaller in terms of overall beam, but it's got such interest, so great shapes being in the bow here. This really is a second master. And I think if you were with a, a larger family where you maybe needed that, you know, two master cabins almost, or even on a charter boat, it will give you a great flexibility of, you know, in the way it's uh, sold and uh, portrayed in the marketing. I mean, it, it really feels, you don't feel like you're in the second cabin. King size bed again with storage underneath via drawers rather than actually lifting the mattress. So again, very easy to access. You've got the access points to the build service points again through beautifully cut in panels and the floor. Audio visuals, the TV, that's a 48, 48 inch on the forward bulkhead. I love inset because you're in the bow of the boat and maybe if you're, you know, using the cabin when the boat's underway, you've got some beautiful inset leather bound um, drop-ins on the vanity top here. So if you're leaving jewelry or phone, there's charging points built in here, they're not gonna slide around. A nice little detail, I think works well. You've got a hatch here, the blinds actually pulled over at the moment, up to the foredeck, again, more natural light. And again, as you've seen all the way through, there's a real interesting feature in the ceiling, which just, you know, it's such a small thing, but it gives more headroom and just breaks up the flat headlining. You know, it just works very nicely in the detailing. Arrow-shaped windows, both port and starboard, with a separate opening port light. Again, great during the day, you want to get fresh air flowing through rather than air conditioning, and that works all the way through the yacht. And then storage, as we came in on the starboard side, here on the port side, storage units, access to AV. And I just want to point out these lovely leather pools. They're actually all the way through saloon, dining and the cabins. <laughs> it's just a, it's a real tactile little thing, but lovely stitched leather and a stainless steel keep. Really nicely done. So going aft, we come into again, a, a ballroom of an ensuite. I mean, Single, single sink on the outer edge here with storage underneath and above with the mirrored doors again. It's a great reflection. Huge shower space, um, you know, ample room here. Storage for toiletries, overhead shower head and the separate one here with a nice uh, hand scrubber push button control. Works really well and the stone and on the floor and the vanity top again works really nicely. And I don't know if you can see this vanity top is a single piece rolled section of, um, of stone. I mean, it, it's stunning. I mean, it, beautiful little details again that make a difference. So if we come back out, I mean, great space, hidden air conditioning. Really, as I said earlier, you're never going to feel like the, you know, you're in the second cabin. It, it's a great space. And before we leave, separate doorway to what is another walking closet space. So full height hanging, half height hanging, drawer storage underneath here. I mean, look at the size of those drawers. Uh, cupboard space, and obviously a lot of floor space and shelving above, and a full height mirror on the inner bulkhead. Again, easy to store everything you're gonna need for an extended cruise away. Yeah, beautifully done. And before we leave, small vanity table, again with a pull-out stool like in the master cabin beautifully protected for your jewellery inside and lovely backlit shelving on the outside here. And even if you sat here, maybe even working, uh, there's power points uh, set inside the, the uh, shelving. Very nicely done. And uh, again, I think it's a great sized uh, second cabin or second master, should we say. I think we've really looked well now through the inside. Um, I think from here, Let's go back up to the outside space that everybody wants to use when they're boating in the beautiful weather such as we have today. Let's come down to the bathing platform. Again, the very easy steps, not too big, plenty of handholds on the way down. And we come down onto what is a huge platform. Give you an idea, full width of the boat, six meters, almost two meters in length. 
Um, just, I think, you know, on this one, we've upgraded the platform to a 900 kilo capacity. So easy for a 460 Williams sport jet will fit on here quite easily. And as we talked about earlier, the whole design at the stern was changed to accommodate all of this extra weight. So the 11,000 litres of fuel, large tenders, large amount of client equipment on, on, you know, on the stern of the yacht. You'll see you've got two built-in pop-up cleats. So both sides. So once the tenders are launched, you've got somewhere to tie off. And again, this platform, as with all of the Sunseeker range, drops down to just below knee height underwater. So great for launching the tender. Bring it back up slightly. You can swim on and off or bring it back up to water level. And what you know, it just couldn't be a better place to sit maybe in a director's chair with your glass of wine at the end of an evening, chilling right at water level. On top of the actual platform itself, we've got built-in seating on both sides. So port and starboard, we can fold this out, two cushions go on top, and you've, again, you've got a seat right at water level. I mean, fantastic place to be. Just close that back up. You've got masses of storage. Now we know everybody is going to want to carry extra toys, extra equipment. So just to give you some idea, if I open up this one hatch here, you've got a locker here that's probably about 40 centimetres, 50 centimetres high, metre and a half deep, will fit sea bobs very easily and very easy at hand to go straight into the water. That's matched on the port side. So you've got exactly the same locker and exactly the same seating here. Now what you'll see across the stern is obviously that you've got these windows built into the stern area and that is to accommodate the crew cabin which we lift up this central hatch very easy on gas rams straight up and you've got lovely access into the crew cabin itself. So this might be privately run, might be a charter boat but you've got good crew space in here for four people. Um, works very nicely so you've got two separate cabins one aft here and one accessed further forward you've got a lovely seating area table small kitchenette here with refrigeration storage sink microwave oven you've got a repeater of the ship to shore radio here that lovely window that we saw both fixed in the fiberglass and in the door so you lots of natural light coming in, power points. They've got their own audio visual, so fusion stereo, TV on the forward bulkhead here. More importantly, a separate toilet and a separate, not water, you know, a separate shower cubicle, which for the crew is, is vital. So, you know, that it's very easy to maintain. And all the way through here, you've got an outro flooring, super resilient, not gonna stain or get marked wipe down bulkheads, so a very, still very nice feeling, but very easy to look after. Obviously air conditioned, right here where the steps are, the steps actually lift up to give you direct access to the stern gear, if there's any maintenance or checks to be done. And then coming forward, we've got more storage above and below here. Separate washer and tumble dryer. So. Again, for shorter days out or extended cruising, mainly for towels, etc., you know, easily get those cleaned and washed and dried overnight. And then, as we said earlier, you've got the, the access door here on the inner bulkhead straight through to the second bunked cabin. What's nice, though, we saw earlier, you've got a secondary access into the engine room, but once you get to this size, the main access to the engine room is through the crew space. And look at this beautiful watertight door, big drop down latch. So let's open this up and go and look into the engine room itself. So first of all, great access. Look at this, just step straight through into what is an immense engine room. Now, believe it or not, you know, you've got two V12 1925 horsepower MTUs here, but they're, they're almost hidden. Look how low down they are, separated, I can walk easily in between here and as we said earlier these engines give great performance top end 27 28 knots but a very easy cruise right the way through from displacement at 10 
all the way through to a fast cruise at 24 or 25 knots. On the outer extremities, you've got two 32 kilowatt Kohler generators powering all the AC systems on board and almost giving you a full backup. So lots of available power, which is important if you're away, staying out at anchor, running stabilizer systems and etc. You, you need that power. So it's all there ready to go. One thing I just want you to take a quick look at is hanging from the ceiling here. We have what is a work of art. It's actually the water maker, but look at it. Beautiful stainless steel, all mounted in this, this hanging aluminium structure. I mean, this could be mounted in the, uh, in the saloon as a feature, let alone the engine room. Beautifully done. You'll see here, if you're walking through this underway, great handholds. There's access hatches all the way through the flooring here to get to all of the service points, water checkpoints, etc. So very easily accessed. The main exhaust is heat lagged. Um, again, you know, just great padding, protecting you if you are coming through with a hot exhaust and obviously stopping that heat radiating around the engine room. Fuel filters, very easy access for maintenance uh, and getting to for checking. And let's not forget this boat also comes with the auto shore system. Now what this allows you to do is to plug in safely pretty much at any marina, uh, certainly around the med where you know, if you get low voltages, it can damage systems on board. This unit will take care of that. It will actually boost or restrict the voltage coming into the boat to ensure that nothing can damage the systems on board. Forward bulkhead is predominantly control of AC power and systems. Uh, breaker panels that you'll see all the way through here on this forward bulkhead. Again, very easily accessed everything's labeled very clearly so very nice to come and do your daily checks and you'll see you also have here two cameras so again it is nice to check in the engine room when you're underway so as much as it's easy to come down and walk through because of noise and etc and safety with the cameras on you can just flick to those on the main nav screens at the helm and have a good general check around the engine room so with that, I think whilst we're in here, uh, I've got Chris Heads, the sales director of Sunseeker London Group here with us today. Obviously this is one of their boats to come and give us a ch quick chat through on what Sunseeker London can offer a potential client buying this 86. Chris, Hi, welcome. Hi Sean, um, my favorite part, um, as you know, yes, sales director uh, of Sunseeker London, uh, but started um, when I was 16 in the boat business and actually I was a marine engineer or apprentice marine engineer so but not on something this size eh? that no 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 it was funny in those days um we were in a yard in East London in fact and um a 35 footer was a big boat I mean we used to stand there and think how do people drive these things but today it's easy you know with hydraulic stabilizers um you know the boat does what it what it has to do and it's easy i mean you know we do sell boats of this size to first time owners mostly with crew but there's guys who want to do it themselves in fact we sold a 116 to a client who does it all, all himself so we've had a good look through the interior so far we've just started on the outside spaces obviously this this boat belongs to sunseeker london group so what, what services do you offer chris what what can you offer the client that's interested in the 86 or one of your other stock boats for that what what do you offer well, as a sure, group? Um, sunseeker london we're your largest distributor um but we have 40 offices uh, throughout europe um, and into africa also going out to turkey egypt um so it's a one-stop shop with us you know it's not anybody can go and buy a boat but it's from start to finish from buying the boat arranging finance, registration, shipping, the warranty works, uh, the retail works, the supplies. It's a one-stop shop. And you know, boats like this now cruise, smaller boats, even 50 foot, uh, are doing 500 hours a year. They will go from Mallorca to Croatia. Uh, the great thing is on their passage, they can stop in the south of France, pop into an office. It's a Sunseeker London owned office. Into Italy, the same, all the way around to Croatia. Um, again, they will get that friendly service because they're dealing with one company. That's, that's really important, isn't it? It's particularly once you get to the size, you know, it, it's a complicated boat. 
you're going to need that backup and support. So having that seamless support all the way through, really, from the UK, throughout the Med, I mean, that's, that's an invaluable service for clients. It, it is. Also, you know, OK, most 86s will have a crew on board. You know, you only need a crew member to leave you in July. It's a phone call away. Chris or one of my team, can you find me a new captain, a new stewardess? And that's what we do. Um, they want to book berths on the way down. They want to get into the places that you can't get into. Sometimes we can put, even do things like that. You know, we try. We've got the contacts. You know, owning the companies throughout Europe with local people. So in Italy, it'd be Italian people. In France, it's French and a mixture of other nationalities. So we know the way that country operates and we know the ways of actually getting things to happen. Right, so Chris, I'm going to go and take a final walk through the outside go and see these, this outside entertaining space. I think what I like to do, I like to go out in about two hours. If you can give a good check through in the engine room here, as you're used to, and then we'll meet up at the end of the video and just chat through exactly what you can offer on this yacht. Well, I'm ready, ready to check the oils and we, we'll be ready. We'll be ready in probably less than that. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So let's go on up to the foredeck. So again, great, easy access up. Really nice with these handrails here all the way through. Important note as we go, you've got a great, lift and lock rail uh, gate here which shuts off to give a bit of security to your guests and younger family members when you're running very nice and secure and easy to use look at the width of the side deck and the height of this rail i mean you feel again really in the yacht rather than up on the side deck here you have a gate for side mount access so depending on where you're moored you might have a side mount stairway to get out to key sides Again, important in certain marinas situations. We've got a fuel filler uh, mounted into the combing further back. So again, that gives it very easy access with a fuel catch tray in there. So if you do spill anything, it doesn't go into the water, importantly, or onto the side deck. You see you've got lit um, side decks of the lighting all the way through. We talked about this earlier. So this is the access from the sliding door in the dining area and obviously the drop down balcony here. And just look how, you know, at this point, how enclosed you are. I mean, this is a really secure place, but also a lovely place if you're gently running along to stand here. I mean, what a view. I mean, works really, really well. The pilot door from the helm we talked about, that obviously folds out and forward uh, into this space. One step up, that's the only step on the side deck. And here we are into this all-important bow entertainment space. Little details, you'll see the carbon fiber on the end of the screen mullions here. Beautiful little touches that from a distance as well look really well done. Storage lockers, both port and starboard side. Give you an idea, these are at a metre and a half long, uh, about 60, 70 centimetres high. So easy storage for fenders, for ropes. And then we'll come up, two steps up, into a massive entertainment space. Carbon fibre cup holders, table fixed here for drinks or maybe occasional dining and again seating wise easily would accommodate five six people here very very easily and as normal we've accommodated storage under these lockers because you always you always got equipment you need to put somewhere so very very nicely done the sun pad itself three separate sunbathing cushions easy for three people and of course it's got the adjustable headrests so you can alter the position that's right for you, whether you're reading or just relaxing in the sun. Come back down the two steps this side. You've got the carbon fibre drinks holders either side of the sun pad. And here's one of my favourites. Look at this little perch here that you could have just imagined trolling back into the harbour on a beautiful day. And what a better, you just couldn't get a better place to sit. I mean, really in the prime position here and very very comfortable as well so down at my feet you've got great fair leads so whether you're side two mooring as we are today or having your bow lines coming up if you're med mooring very easy to access the rope and through the fair lead coming over we've got twin windlasses now not there won't be many occasions where you need to use both anchors at once unless it's really bad conditions but what this gives you the security of is if you do get a failure 
if you lose an anchor or there's any problem, you've got a complete backup so as not to ruin the holiday. Both of them have great on-deck uh, winch controls, uh, brake controls, and also devil's claw to ensure that once they're up, they're held securely in place. Very important, particularly if you're doing longer runs. And you'll see each one has simple deck controls. So if you are in particular doing your bow lines, bringing the bow line through and using the capstan, you can use both hands whilst using your foot on the, uh, for the actual control of the, the windlass itself. Obviously twin cleats, you've got two massive um, anchor lockers here either side. And again, they're plenty large enough to actually get fender uh, storage in there as well as getting access to the chain. And you will see there that as well as the foot controls, I don't know if you can see mounted there, on either side you do have a handheld remote for the anchors as well. And why that is nice and important is if you do, if you know, if you're using the windlass, you're watching as it's coming up through the water and you want to be careful, you know, you can actually hold that control and actually look at what you're doing and use the control at the same time. So with that, I think you can see this, this is a very well planned, easy to use space, both for mooring, anchoring, and more importantly, entertaining. But with that, let's go back around the side deck and we'll go up to the flybridge to have a good look at what that can offer. Opening up this gorgeous carbon fiber hatch here, <laughs> what a work of art that is, real feature. Brilliant staircase, very easy to access up, hand holds where you need it, all lights on each step, so very, very easy to use during the day or at night. We're coming up and obviously if you drop that hatch back down, immediately gives you that nice secure space that nobody can accidentally come back down the uh, stairs. Straight into a wet bar. So this works if you're a client, a family using the boat, or if you've got a crew on board and you're actually going to have someone serving. Nicely positioned, so it serves both fore and aft very easily. In the wet bar itself, open up the lids to barbecue, to a beautifully insulated cool box. Put your ice in there and turn that unit on. It's a powered, cooled unit. You know, that's going to stay all day quite easily. And the barbecue is situated nicely, so I hope the wind will take any smells out over the side of the boat. Underneath the countertop, we've got refrigeration, ice maker, storage, sink here. And this look links very nicely with a raised plinth for the bar stools there. So it's a very functional space. I mean, it nicely sized, loads of area for laying out drinks for food. Really nicely done. These bar stools are beautiful as well. Look at the footrest. Looks like a it looks like an anchor. They're beautifully made. Really, really delicately done. But they, they really stand out. Look very comfortable as well. So coming forward. Handrail here, it's little things like that. When you're moving around the yacht, just falls to hand. Makes a big difference when you're moving around, particularly underway. And we come into probably what is the forward, the helm zone, if you want, which is this seating area where if you're underway, four or five people here very, very easily. Um, you know, very comfortable. You feel very secure. You're protected by the screen. And look at this beautiful stainless steel roll top on the screen looks very nicely and then if we look forward you'll see that you've actually got a sunbed space actually tucked under the screen so you can either sit here underway you imagine getting yourself here you're tucked in wind flow coming over your head or move these cushions pull a button here flip that backrest down and you've actually got a full length sun pad which again whether you're at anchor or underway would be a great place to be and little details look even little molded in cup holders up there by the screen opposite to the seating you've got the helm area now what i love is the helm seats have been done in this beautiful like silver metallic material that really stands out very unusual and the seats themselves fully adjustable in height um, forwards and backwards and also with a bolster if like me you like to stand you can actually stand here nice and easily there's a nice footrest and you've got great visibility flip up wind deflector now even where you are boating in the med in the heat and the cold having that just to take that airflow 
over the top makes a huge difference. And the helm itself is a complete repeat of what we have downstairs with the two large touchscreen uh, Simrad controls, but with function buttons on the edge, just if it's too rough to be using the touch control. Separate control here for the autopilot. Controls fall right to hand. I mean, very, very nicely done. With the same autopilot control, so once you're in pilot, the small course adjustments, very, very delicately and accurately done with the jog stick here. And obviously, thrusters. So when you're mooring from here, I've got great visibility down the whole starboard side, visibility right out to the bow, and great, you know, access to the controls here. I mean, very, very, you know, falls to hand very easily. Little details, you see this on the whole Suntica range, just the emblem that self centers. So as you move the wheel, the emblem follows round. Nice little touch, makes a big difference. If we come aft now, you'll see at the moment, we've got what is a beautifully shaded, because it's a nice sunny day here today, more formal seating area. Now, obviously, we can extend that out. You pull the wooden supports out, fold out, and you've got a beautifully shaded large dining area. If I fold that other flap out there, you've got seating for eight to 10 people quite easily on there. But you're not drinking, uh, sorry, you're not eating. You're just having a lunchtime drink and you want to be in the sun. So push the button, we'll open up the canopy here and let that sun flood in. And what a difference that makes. I mean, it completely transforms that central dining zone, if you want, and wet and uh, bar area into full sunshine. Now, obviously that roof can be stopped in any position, so you don't have to have it fully open or closed. It can be in any position underway as well. So if you want a bit of shade, more light, then you can let it in very easily. But what a difference. It's totally transformed this central area on the deck. All important storage. So if you look all the way around this horseshoe seating, you see you've got storage all the way built into the lockers very easily accessed uh, and all important. You, you always need storage. And there's lovely little details. You'll see these mouldings, rather than just being straight down to the deck, have actually got a lovely curve to them. Then a recessed rope lighting, LED rope lighting in there. And they're actually raised up off the deck. Little details, but make a huge difference to the overall design and feel of the flybridge. The, cut, the, the, the uh, hard top itself, it's not until you get close, you realise this is open weave carbon fibre and not a print. This is a true carbon fibre hard top. So not only does it look beautiful, it obviously reduces weight dramatically. The, at this level obviously helps incredibly with the stability at rest and underway. If we go further aft, we come into what is probably more of the uh, the sunbathing, the entertainment zone, and you've got a massive sunbed here. I mean, that's easily accommodate, you know, it's two meters long, probably virtually two meters wide. Great space to relax with the headrest there. Maybe underway, you would just sit there, actually sat against the backrest, uh, watching the world go by. So again, just works exceptionally well. And then as with most of the yacht range, we then leave this aft deck that can be sort of personally bespoke by a client. So maybe a second tender, a jet ski and a crane, easily accommodated, everything's prepped for it. Spa tub, that would fit. Or maybe just more loose furniture, some steamer chairs that can be moved around to match the sun so you get that last bit of sunbathing in at the end of the day. And all behind a beautifully secure, nice and high stainless steel rail that again is not just a rail. Look at the, the different curvature, the way the rails are fitted in. It's just got interest and detail to it that really set off the whole flybridge space. Give you an idea, from here to the helm position, it's gotta be getting on for nine meters, eight to nine meters long. So it's a huge space that's gonna accommodate your whole family and guests very, very easily. So I think that concludes our walk round. What I'd like to do now is go back downstairs, 
let's sit with Chris Head and talk about what can be actually done on this particular yacht. Chris, we've had a great look round. She's a beautiful yacht. Uh, we've heard from you about what Sunseeker London Group can potentially offer uh, to a client and services, etc. But let's, let's talk about this yacht particularly. So you own this yacht, Sunseeker London Group own it, and this, this particular one is available, yes? Yes, available. Um, I believe we've sold and delivered uh, five, five or six um, 86s for 2020. Um, it's, it's a great selling yacht. You know, the volume is, is you know, it, it's a yacht. It feels like a yacht. Um, when you look at everything, it's, you know, it's yacht-like. Um, yeah, it's available, uh, which is unique, really, uh, a position to be in because we could have the boat ready to go within about a week from when we receive the signed contract and the payment. And you can organise tenders, toys, any other equipment relatively quickly to get fitted on board, if a client wants more, but... Yeah, sure. I mean, really, the bit's missing. It would be the tender, the sea bobs. Um, some people want satellite TV, but most people now are quite happy with using SIM cards and watching Netflix and all the things and streaming from their iPads. Um, safety equipment to go on board um, and really kitting the boat out. And, you know, as I said previously, um, we work closely with Harrods to our clients can go there, buy everything for the yacht. It can be delivered to the shipyard. So when the yacht gets to destination, it's turnkey and ready to use. Okay, and if a client was interested maybe in chartering as well, this is something you can work out services for, crew, getting in touch with charter agencies? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the 86 charters very well. Um, she charters for 55,000 euros a week. Um, our clients are enjoying eight to 10 weeks a year depending on what use they would want to charter it from the company for. But, you know, it's a great charter boat. And in fact, um, I was lucky enough to spend uh, last summer on a client's um, 86 for a week. Uh, I was invited with a family. And I have to say, the size of the yacht, we stayed on board in Mallorca. Um, there was seven of us on board and it, it feels a spacious yacht. You know, I'm lucky enough to use 40 metre yachts, but when this boat offers everything a 40 metre does. That's great to hear, Chris. And I mean, I mean, walking around, I think we've really seen the, as you say, that yacht look, the feel, the space, the systems on board. I mean, it really is ready to go. And it sounds like within a very short period, someone could be on board in the med, enjoying it, um, moored outside one of your offices. So how do they make contact, Chris? Where's the... Well, they can call a number and um, they can call any one of my offices. They can go online, Sunseeker london.com they can find all their offices there they can speak to anybody if they want to speak to me i'm available seven days a week um yes i do turn the phone off at about 10 o'clock at night but um i'm willing to speak to any client anybody who's interested in sunseeker boats or other boats um it's not only new boats sean you know we specialize in used um and new we hold a, a vast amount of stock of uh, used boats um unfortunately we don't have an 86 available, which we own, uh, used. Um, they're like gold dust, in fact. We get many inquiries for those. Um, yeah, call me, call one other team. And whether you're starting with a small boat and working your way through, if you do buy a Sunseeker, it's a bug. You will buy another Sunseeker. Brilliant. Look, thank you for taking the time of walking through this beautiful 86 with us. Please do call if you're interested in this particular yacht, or as Chris said, anything else in the range, and we really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.